Hi, my name is Louis Presbienda. In this overview, we will look at XMC technology, VITA 42. By adding switch fabric interconnect to PMC, we arrive at an XMC module. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, with the PMC and the parallel bus and its back planes, we have reached the maximum rate at which data can be moved. And later in this presentation, we'll compare the switch fabric of PCIe to the standard PCI bus. Single width PMC modules use up to four 64 pin connectors P11 to P14. These connectors are 10 millimeter high connectors and are used for the PCI bus and for the I.O. and they're present on XMC as well as PMC. The additional connectors shown here, the P15 and the P16, are the high speed interconnect pins used for switch fabric. They're 114 pin 3.125 gigabytes per second connectors. On the P15, the primary connector, there's 20 differential I.O. pairs. There's also 3.3 volt, 12 volt, ground, reset, JTAG, and present signals. On the P16, the secondary connector, there's also 20 differential I.O. pairs and an additional 38 user I.O. pins. Many XMC connector boards use the P15 connector in place of the P11 to P13 connectors, and you will also find the, additionally the P14 connector. P14 connector is the I.O. connector, and it's used primarily because there's a lot of systems out there, VPX, VME, Compact PCI, that have this I.O. routed to the back plane and it's nice to take advantage of what is already in place. XMC can have several single width and double width board sizes. Here's shown the standard defined IEEE 1386 board size of 148 millimeters by 74 millimeters. And just like PMC, XMC adheres to the conduction-cooled ANSI VITA 20 standard and its board size of 143.75 millimeters. Now, an XMC card can optionally be even shorter if the P11 through P14 connectors are not used, and it would be at 139 millimeters. The XMC base specification allows implementation of many switch fabric technology options as is shown here. There's Serial Rapid I.O. Vita 42.2 which is used for interprocessor communication and also moving data at very high rates. PCI Express Vita 42.3 is also used to move data at very high rates in the system. And Aurora 42.5 shown here is really not a switch fabric interconnect, but just a point to point where you have two FPGAs and you need to move data between them very quickly, and this was defined by Xilinx. Also shown is 10 gigabit Ethernet 42.6, and this is used mostly for system management and not really used for moving data at very high rates. Not shown here is Serial Rapid I.O., which is 42.1, and Hyperlink 42.4, and then there's 42.10, which is the general purpose interconnect, which is used for things like uh, Serial RS-42 and for USB and fiber channel. Let's compare standard PCI to PCIe. You see that PCI is a shared parallel bus architecture where arbitration and sharing the bus is required. And the key difference with PCIe is that it's a point-to-point -point bus. No sharing, no arbitration required. 
Now, in a standard PCI bus, you have data, address, interrupt lines, and a clock line. And so, for example, when an interrupt is issued on its signal, it's immediately seen at the receiving end. Well, the difference with PCIe is that there isn't an interrupt signal. And so, how do you, how do you issue this interrupt in a PCIe bus? Well, the way it's done is with messages. And you might think that we're going to have a longer latency here because it's not a single wire, but you have to form this message and then send it off. Well, in reality, it's only going to be about a 100 nanosecond delay or latency because the messages are formed very quickly and the link is always present. No arbitration is required to gain access to the bus. A connection between any two PCIe devices is known as a link, a logical connection. A single PCI lane is shown here with a pair of transmit signals and a pair of receive signals. So for a single lane, you have a total of four wires. And additionally, we, we show a four lane link, which shows how the data is split off as it sends down these four lanes. The first byte goes down lane one, and the last fourth byte goes down lane four. So at the receiving end, these bytes have to be reconstructed. Now, a PCI link can construct minimally of a single lane, but you can also have two, four, eight, 16 and 32 lane links. Sequence numbers at N, a 32 bit CRC are assigned to each packet in order to protect the complete packet. The CRC is a cycle redundancy check code and it's received at the other end and checked for the integrity of the packet and how it was sent. In addition, these packets contain a header which includes the size of the payload, which can be up to 256 in the case of our XMC V5 product. And in the header, there's also a request and completion information and a target address. It's the responsibility of the system to route things by address. 8B, 10-bit B encoding and decoding of the data is used to embed the clock in the data. Here you see an 8-bit value which is broken into a first five bits and then with that is created a 6-bit value and then also shown are three bits of that 8-bit value that are split off and a 4-bit value is created. The idea here is to encode a new value that doesn't have a long run of either zeros or ones to ensure that the clock can be recovered in the data. Clocking information is embedded in the data in this way. We now address why XMC switch fabric is needed and why and how it actually is used to move data quicker. Here we have a PMC data transfer rate slide where the maximum data rate of one gigabit per second for PCI X in a, using a 133 megahertz clock at 64 bits is, is achieved theoretically. In actuality, the data actually moves at 644 megabits per second. An Acumag product, the PMC VLX, at, in a 100 megahertz system using 64 bits, moves the data at 543 megabytes per second. And the same card in a 66 megahertz system moves data at 322 megabytes per second. Now, why don't we achieve those maximum theoretical data rates? This slide shows that, as we know, with the PCI bus, you must arbitrate for the bus to gain access to it. And so when the clock starts at the beginning of a DMA transfer, you must first get access to that bus, and that time is wasted. And then later, when you're in the middle of moving that data, you'll see pauses or blips, because the bus has to be given up for the other operations, other 
boards in the system that need to temporarily use the bus. And so all these take away from achieving your absolute maximum theoretical data rates. So XMC is used, this switch fabric interconnect, to improve the data transfer rates. And you can see here with a PCIe 16 lane implementation, which you could actually implement using both the P16 and the P15 connector on an XMC module, you could achieve four gigabits per second. An eight lane implementation would achieve two gigabits per second, and you can implement that just using the P15 connector alone. Now, a four lane implementation is very comparable to the maximum data rate you could actually move data on a PCI, standard PCI bus at one gigabit per second. And just as in standard PCI bus, we don't achieve the maximum theoretical data rates, but instead of the one gigabit per second, we actually see 609 megabits per sample moving on a four-lane PCI bus. Now this slide shows a DMA transfer, a write transfer on an XMC bus. This transfer is 8,000 bytes, which take 13.12 microseconds. And th this 8,000 8, bytes is broken up into packets that are sent out over the bus. And the packets in this case were 128 byte packets. And there were 62 of those little packets sent. And it was the time forming the next packet to be sent off and the checking of the integrity of the sent packet at the receiving end that takes away from reaching your maximum theoretical transfer rate. Now, if we had plugged this card into a system that would have supported 256-byte packet sizes, we would have saw more on the order of 770 megabytes per second for the transfer rate. Thank you for viewing this presentation on XMC technology.